Okay, we're live apparently. Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. I am very excited to have this young gentleman on the show, Chris Roberts. North Wales Dragons, which we're going to learn about in a little bit. Uh, but he comes to us all the way from the UK. And we're going to talk about how mate, you can make a difference through recreational activity. Welcome, Chris. How are you doing? What time is it there? 10, 11? Uh, it's actually 9 p.m. Oh, oh nine! Yeah. It's only five hours. Okay, good. Oh good. yeah, yeah. So um, we're still wide awake at the moment, but <laughs> you know what? You've actually made my night so far because you actually said young. <laughs> we are. Everybody's a young man to me. I don't know. I figure like. I mean, I'm 900. It's the mine's the alcohol that keeps me going. Um, but I I love. I, I did just a little bit of research because obviously. Um, you know, the United States sports are a little different than European, especially UK. And so um, I did a little research. So I'm fascinated by your journey. I'm fascinated by talking about this topic. I think people are looking for ways to uh, make a difference. And there are so many people who love activity. They want to get out. They want to do things. But we've, we've been sequestered for so long and quarantined. So... I love all of it, but I told you before we went live, before we talk about that, people want to know the journey. They want to know a little bit about Chris. So give us a little, little origin story, if you don't mind. Okay, how this mad journey came about. Well, going back to when I was a young man, when I was obviously younger, as, um, younger than <laughs> I am now, um, when I was 10 years old, my... Uh, mother and father used to work in a factory in a washing machine plant and they every summer they had a format where within this washing machine plant what they would do is they would have a soccer tournament so you would have interdepartments and they would play each other so the machine shop would play the cab erectors and the press shop would play the staff and that <laughs> that sort of thing. So that was kind of my first introduction to to soccer, but to community soccer. And of course, at 10 years old, you don't realize what's going on around you. And of course, you don't know what plans, you haven't got a crystal ball, you don't know what's going on in the future. So I got to the age of 16, 17, and I got an apprenticeship with a, an engineering company. And within this engineering company, we were dealing with other companies and we would obviously work together side by side with, uh, with construction teams. We would work together with um, carpenters, um, bricklayers, you name it. And um, what we used to do then, we used to say, okay, why not as engineers and carpenters get together and why don't we play soccer with you at lunchtime against the, you know, against whoever. And that's the way that that kind of developed over the next few years. Um, and then as I was kind of getting older and getting more mature and what have you, I was thinking to myself, you know what, this is a good thing. We can, we can do this a lot more often. So I was contacting other businesses and saying, you know, how about we have an 11 aside game one night? So we'd have an 11 side game and then we'd get together afterwards in, in a pub and, you know, we'd kind it's always of... always in a pub. Always in a pub. Always has to involve beer. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that that was the way that it actually went along. And I've been doing this all my life. So, you know, I'm, I'm now a young 61-year-old. So yeah, I've been doing this for 50 years. Anyway, going back to uh, 2009, uh, we were dealing with a, a company, and it was actually the oldest football club, oldest soccer club in the world. And they said to us, do you know how we can raise money for charity? So, you know, at, at that time, we were pretty naive, and we said, no, but, you know, we'll go away and we'll have a think about it. So we kind of went away, and we didn't really think about it. Um, and so one night when um, December the 31st, 2008, my eldest son was in Scotland and he was at a Hogmanay party with his now in-laws. And he phoned up and he said, um, I know how we can raise money for charity. 
So I said, go on, how are we going to do that then? <laughs> so we said, we're going to have a, a soccer match. So I said, okay. I said, who, when, why, what? So he said, well, what we'll do is um, there's a bunch of lads up here from Scotland. They'll come down and play. And he said, if you do all the organising, you do all the project management of it all. He said, you arrange the, the ground, you arrange the auctions, you arrange the raffles, that kind of thing. And I'll just get these guys to come down on, on, a, on a coach. So June the 8th, 2009 and these guys came down on a on a coach and um it was a it was a rainy rainy day but it, if you know anything about wales and the uk it rains a lot here we we have it's our fair very year. rainy yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these guys came down like i say rainy day rainy afternoon and um I remember they all got off the off the bus, off the coach, and they'd got these same tracksuit tops on. They all had their initials on it, what have you. They all looked the part. They all looked really, really good, like they've done it all before. Whereas we kind of just messed around and played as best that we can. So the game kicked off, and it was 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, 4-0. Until the final whistle went, and we got battered completely 10 nil <laughs> so we came off the pitch and we were a bit despondent about that thinking well we've arranged our first ever match and that's not that's really not gone really. One. yeah so we got inside the clubhouse and we got together we had a raffle we had the auction we had an after dinner speaker and we actually raised two and a half thousand pound so I'm assuming I think that's probably around about your three uh, three thousand yeah, dollar mark. About three thousand. Yeah. So this this event went off and um it was brilliant. We had a whale of a time, it was really, really good. And we thought, you know what? We'll do this again next year. So that's what we did. We planned for it next year, but we thought if we do it in 2010 then what we do is we'll, we actually did it for a charity called Boots for Africa. And um, so we thought, right, we'll raise money for Boots for Africa, but there is also help for heroes that we're close to as well. So we'll raise, some, we'll raise some money for help for heroes as well. So we did exactly the same thing again, but split the money in half. So same, same idea again, 2000 pound. And, you know, were you doing was, it annually then you were doing it once a year? Maybe did we lose you? Yeah, uh, there was a bit there of you are. yeah. You're, you're doing it once a year, and that was the, the start of it. That that was the plan. Um, then what happened was in 2011 we did it again, but we actually got four teams involved this time round. And the reason why we got four teams was because right, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So each one raised money for a different charity uh, with the four teams. And then the next year in 2012, we decided that we would introduce a tournament. So then we got eight teams involved with the tournament. So that meant that eight charities were getting benefit from doing what we were doing. Wow. Now, wait, are they so so you're doing all of this. And it's not necessarily a an organized team, like an organized sports yeah. team. These are these are people who just want to play soccer, like we would call uh, yeah. in in America, uh, play soccer for because they love the game. And then, of yeah. course, raising money is just an added benefit. Yeah. And one thing that we won't do is we actually won't join a league. And the reason why we won't join the league is because we don't want to put any pressure on the players right. to come and turn up every Saturday at three o'clock and think they've got to play and they've got to win. The idea is that they play for inclusion and social rather than competitive. So we How have... does that work in the UK? I thought everything soccer was competitive. No, we're, no, <laughs> we, we are definite believers that soccer should be all inclusive because you know you've got young football teams you've got um 
you've got children who are playing six years old seven years old and they all pe they all play for um a team that is expecting some kind of elite from them yes but it shouldn't be about elite whatsoever it should be about inclusion so every every child should have the opposite um should have the opportunity to play sports whether they're fantastic at it or whether they're bad at it but right. they should they still should have that opportunity to to do recreational activity so you've and obviously I, seen them you've seen the, you chose the the topic of the show the title which i love you've actually seen recreational activity make a difference tell us yeah. a little bit about that you've seen it in whether it's the kids or adults or the charities, tell us about why that's important. You're making a difference. How? What have you seen? Well, we we always say to, to people that there are three different avenues that you can use recreational activity to make a difference. So you can either be a charity, you could be a community group, or you can be a business. Now, if you're a charity and you want to you want to generate some money well you can actually create a charity soccer team you can even create a charity sports team it doesn't have to be a soccer team it doesn't have to be 11 aside it could be five aside you can have a basketball team of three of you there is so many different ways that you can adapt recreational activity that can actually go and make a difference so you you are a community group, you are a charity, you are a, you are a business. Businesses, for example, what they do is every year they choose a charity and say, I want to support this charity for the year. But what they do is they say, okay, I'll give them a hundred pound to go and do such and such a thing. Right. Well, isn't it not empowering to turn around and say to your work group, why not get together and do something that's recreational, that will actually raise money for us. Because if you go back 150 years, 160 years, that's how soccer teams first started. They were factories. So what did they do in the lunchtime? They went yeah. out, they played football. Some of the biggest soccer teams in the world were created by people going out at, at lunchtime, dinner time, and going to play soccer. An example for you is a business that approached us, and that this was a car parts company in Manchester. And this car parts company in Manchester, um, they had uh, a chap working for them, and he developed pulmonary fibrosis. Wow. It eventually came to pass that he needed a lung transplant but unfortunately, time and conditions caught up with him and he passed away. Mm. The guys who worked alongside him um, obviously knew his wife and his wife had set up a foundation called Breathe for Bob. So what they wanted to do was they wanted to do something in his name that would remember him, do something good between them as a bunch, and also make a difference. Yes. So they approached us and they said, we would love to have a soccer match with you. Would you host it? Would you do your thing? And we said, of course, we, we'd love to. So what we did was we facilitated it all. We arranged the day. They came down to us and they played. We did the same thing, did an auction, did a raffle, and they went away and they uh, generated a lot of recognition, advertising, and also uh, put money into the British Lung Foundation through Breathe for Bob. And that is a classic example of how a business can utilize recreational activity to make a difference. Because not only are they making them making a difference to their employees, because they got physical activity, they got mental health out of it, they got social inclusion out of it, 
but they also made a difference to their local community. And conversely, because our guys had played in that as well, we got the same feeling from it. We got the same. Sure. So it's it, a lot of positive when you are giving back. People don't understand how the power of that. I mean, you're yeah. not just impacting the one life, your life, the person who buys the luncheon. You're this is a ripple effect when you are, yeah. especially when you're dealing with people who there's charitable needs or the youth. You're making an impact on a lot more people by yeah. uh, including the recreational activity as part of uh, any kind of fundraising, any kind of involvement, any kind of positive promotion it doesn't i love the fact that you said um inclusion love that word I, I think it's just so important but i think a lot of people didn't realize how you could do it with say a soccer team do you prefer yeah. soccer or football i have to ask yeah <laughs> it's it's football for us over here football right yeah, All right. yeah. tell people how they can get involved um what they can how they can learn best about what you're doing, maybe they want to talk to you about implementing it in their area of the world. What's the best way for them to reach you? Um, they can email me. There's chris at northwellsdragons.co.uk. Um, if you Google North Wales Dragons, you will find us because we're, we, we're pretty well up there on um, social media. So, you know, one click of a button can take you to Twitter, to Facebook. Um, Instagram, you name it, we're across all of those, LinkedIn as well. So there is a way of, of tracking us down. Um, and by all means, please, you know, if you want to have a chat about it, by all means, contact me. I'd, I'd love to help. Um, you know, I've, I've spoken to a few people over in the USA and um, they've been, it, it's an idea that they, that a few people would like to adopt because um, soccer hasn't really kicked off the ground in a huge way. I know it's getting more and more prevalent, but I know that you know it, it, it can be developed. But it, again, going back to what I said before, it's not just about soccer. It's about any kind of sport. And we're not talking professional sport. You know, our, our youngest player is 16 years old. We're, okay, he flies around the pitch like... <laughs> you know, like a whirlwind. But our oldest player is 65 years old. Wow. So, you know, it's a, th there's nothing there that's hard and fast that says that these guys are anything near professional or semi-professional. They just love to play because... I love the concept of it. That's why I think it's universal. It's not just UK. It's not just North Wales. The, what, you, what you have created can be uh, reproduced yeah. and... Uh, make an impact much worldwide. So that's why I, yeah. I really, when, when we talked about you coming on the show, I'm like, this is such a great idea. And you're right. We haven't embraced soccer like we should. Orlando is very good because we have our own uh, yeah. Orlando City mm -hmm. soccer. But of course, there's a beautiful Brit behind that. Um, and so it's just, I love this concept. So I want people to reach out to Chris Roberts, go to northwalesdragons.co.uk or you can reach out to me. I've tagged him and everything. He's very easy to get a hold of, and it can be on any of those platforms. So we went live on five platforms today. So any of those platforms, you can find him. He does a great job. I just love this concept, Chris. Thank you so much for being on the show. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you for having me. And like I say, calling me young has actually made my, it's made my <laughs> 2021, to be honest. <laughs> You're young to me, Chris. You're young to me. Young at heart, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Art and young mm -hmm. in uh, your mindset of doing good for the world. So thank you. Chris is with North Wales Dragons and just reach out to him. You want to make a difference. All of you, most of the people who reach out say, I never, I don't bring enough sports people on here. Well, here's something to throw all of it together. Inclusion, sports, charity, community. Um, and he's got a great idea. And Don't let him scare you just because he's from the UK, he's obviously just as friendly and wonderful and giving uh, when he's talking about sharing his ideas. So thank you, Chris. Awesome. Yeah, no problem at all. All right, we'll see you guys soon. We'll be back. Thank you, Chris Roberts. Go to northwalesdragons.co.uk. All right, guys, we'll see you back here later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>